Hey Math 31, welcome to example two. We're going to rework the exact same systems of equations that we did in example one. These are both two by twos, right? We're going to work these two, but we're going to use elimination rather than substitution. So, so we already know the answers that we should be getting. We should definitely get a six comma four here and a negative one comma one here because those are the same answers we got in example one. And when you solve a system, you get the one answer. But I wanna go about it with a different method. Now, much like substitution, when you use elimination, there are multiple ways of using elimination. So it's very possible that the work I show you in 2A and 2B is not exactly what you would have chosen to do yet we both should wind up at the same, the same spot. We should both wind up at 6, 4 for our ordered pair here and negative 1, 1 for our ordered pair here. All right, so what elimination involves doing is literally eliminating one of your variables by multiplying one or both equations by a constant. So here's, here's a for instance. Now again, what I'm about to do is not unique to this problem. There are multiple ways of doing this. I look at this x variable, it has a lead coefficient of one, and this one has a lead coefficient of two. And since these ones are both positive and these ones are both negative, it's kind of a wash in terms of which variable to eliminate, because ideally what you want is you want variables to have the same order of coefficient, like I would like these to both be twos, but I would like one to be positive and one to be negative. So since these are already both positive and these are already both negative, there's no advantage in terms of going for x's or y's. The reason I'm going to go for x is because it's easier to multiply 1 to get to 2. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I would like this coefficient to be 2, but I would like it to specifically be negative 2 so that it has the same magnitude but different sign. So I'm going to multiply every term in this equation by negative 2. That doesn't quite look like a multiplication sign. All right, so let, let's try that. Oh, I am having a good time getting this parentheses. Okay, give me a sec, third time's a charm. Wah, nailed it. Okay, so now if I multiply every term in this equation by negative two, I wanna distribute that negative two to all three terms. Negative two times x is negative two x. Negative two times negative six y is positive 12 y, and negative two times negative 18 is positive 36. So I've altered my first equation. I'm, it's, it keeps the same ratio, so I haven't changed this equation of the line. It's just got some multiples on it, or really I've multiplied everything by negative two. I'm gonna keep the second equation as is, and then when I do this, you can see now I have a negative 2x and a positive 2x here. So what I can do is I can add these two equations to each other. Negative 2x plus 2x, they eliminate, right? That was by design, that's the whole point of this. 12y minus 7y becomes 5y. 36 minus 16 becomes 20. And all of a sudden you can see I took my two by two and I simplified it to a one by one. So this was two variables, two equations. Now I just have one variable, one equation, and it becomes a little bit nicer, right? I divide both sides by five, and I get y is equal to four. And we know y should be equal to four. We found the same solution in example one. Now, unlike substitution with elimination, there's no equation to directly sub back into. So you can take this y value four and either sub it in to this first equation and solve for x or the second equation and solve for x. I'm gonna sub it into the first equation and solve for x because I have an x isolated, not isolated, but I have an x with a lead coefficient of one here. So I know x minus six times four should be equal to negative 18. So that's saying x minus 24 should be equal to negative 18. And when I add 24 to the other side, I get that x is equal to six, and you see us arriving at the exact same ordered pair of six comma four, okay? And again, this is just one version of this problem. If you wanted to see an alternate version, let me just erase this for a moment. Let's say you wanted to eliminate the y's. You were really into doing that. Go with me for a moment. I could have multiplied this equation by seven, and then this one by negative six. 
and I'll erase this in a little bit because that's not what this work is showing. But imagine I multiplied this by negative or by seven. I would have negative 42y here, and I would have positive 42y here. And as long as I have my y variables that have the same number in front of them but opposite signs, then that variable can be eliminated. So like I said, you have lots of options when you go through substitution or elimination. You just gotta find one of them that works. All right, so then taking a look at this, or I should, when I say look at this, let's look at the second one, okay? And let's just think about the possibilities and then we can decide on one. If I wanted to eliminate the x's, you can see that I have a positive sign here and a negative sign here already. So they're already opposite in sign, which is something I, I usually look for. So I could just multiply this one by four. All right, and that's what I ultimately will do. But I, I would do want you to see the other option. Let's say you're a really hard set on, you're like, nope, I'm gonna eliminate the Y's. That's what I wanna do. If I wanted to eliminate the Y's, they don't have opposite signs right now. So that's kind of a bummer, but I, I can fix that. It, we've got a five here and a three here. So I could multiply this one by negative three and I could multiply this one by five. That would give me a negative 15 Y on the first equation and a positive 15 Y on the second. I could also, if I wanted to, I could have multiplied this one by three and this one by negative five. Then I would have a positive 15 Y on the first equation and a negative 15 Y on the second equation. So again, there are many options for solving these. And they're all gonna take us to negative one, one, because that is the solution to this system of equations. But like I said, when I'm going through this, the fact that the x variables are, are already opposite in sign is a bonus for me. So I just say, well, I'm gonna multiply this by four. So I'm not gonna do anything to the first equation. We'll have eight x plus five y is equal to negative three. And then I would have negative eight x, I'm gonna distribute the four, what plus 12 y is going to be equal to 20. These will eliminate or cancel by design. This becomes 17 y is equal to 17. When I divide both sides by 17, I'm getting, going to get y equals one. That's great, that's not the entire answer, right? You owe me an ordered pair when we have two by two systems. So I can take y equaling one and plug it into the first equation or the second equation. It doesn't matter. I'll, I'll go with the second equation this time out, only because I picked the first equation before. So this would be negative two x plus three times y, which we know is one, should be equal to five. So I have here a negative two x plus three is equal to five. So I think negative two x is equal to two, and that's telling me x is equal to negative one. And it should be, that's what we got the first time around. So here, I know that I have negative one, one. And if this was the first time I was doing this problem, I would then store one into x, excuse me, negative one into x, and positive one into y, and check that equality held. It's always a good idea to solve, I'm sorry, to take your solutions and plug them back in and see what's going on. All right. Third way to do this, it's not my favorite way, it's the one I, I do least often. If you wanted to, and I'm obviously you don't have to do this, but if you wanted to, and I'm gonna give you, we'll, we'll just solve this one, I'll do this first one. If you wanted to solve these graphically, all right, this is the third method. We've got substitution, elimination, and graphing. Actually, there's a fourth one um, using matrices that we're not gonna get to, but let me just show you the graphing one. You could take both of these equations and rewrite them in slope intercept form. So I'm gonna just move this for a little bit. Let me move this up and let's talk about the optional graphing method. All right, so let's take a look. So let's talk about optional graphing method to solve linear systems. And I only show you this just so you can see a different way of checking it on your calculator. Okay, if we had something like x minus 6y is equal to negative 18, and 2x minus 7y is equal to negative 16, I could put both of those equations into slope-intercept form. And if I put this one into slope-intercept form, 
let's just work this a little. If I move the 6y over and the 18 over, I'm looking at 6y will be equal to x plus 18. All right, if I start to solve for y here, I have a negative 7y. I'm going to add this to that side, move the 16 over. I think I'm looking at 7y equaling 2x plus 16. Let me divide the coefficient. So I will get y is equal to 1 sixth x plus 3. And here I will get y is equal to 2 sevenths x plus 16 sevenths. All right, you can see there's a, there's a good chunk of work involved if you want to do this method. But what you can do then is your calculator can take that mx plus b. Oh, it looks like we were having some logistic growth last time here. Let me clear that out. You can put your first equation into y1. You can put your second equation into y2. All right, and then we can hit zoom 6, and we can see where those lines intersect. Because wherever they intersect, that's how we solve, at least graphically, our system of equations. So to me, it looked like it intersected somewhere around here. It's not super close, but if you want to do, if you want to calculate where these graphs intersect, you hit second trace, option five, and then it's enter, enter, enter. And sure enough, they're popping back six, four. Okay. So you do have the option of checking things on your calculator under the graphing calculator screen. But in order to do that, you have to solve both equations in your system and put them in slope-intercept form. Okay, now for both examples one and two, since they were the same, uh, in each A and B, we got exactly one solution each time out. And that is the most common option. Most of the time when you solve a system of equations, you get an ordered pair. There are two exceptions to that rule, and we're gonna take a look at those two exceptions in the next example. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Bye.